What does a communist and a functional programmer have in common? They both hate classes. Hi, my name is Tyson Gatenhead, and today I'm going to be talking about functional programming in React. And it's kind of a topic I've been working on in my own code and what I've been building over the past year or two. And so I've really come to a place where I feel like I've got a lot of really good perspective on how to implement functional concepts inside of React, and I just wanted to share those. So first of all, who am I? Um, so like I said before, I'm Tyson Cadenhead. Um, you can find me on the internet at TysonCadenhead.com. Um, I'm on Twitter at Tyson Cadenhead. Um, pretty much anything that says Tyson Cadenhead on the internet anywhere is me because um, there's not anyone else with that name. <clears throat> I work at a company called Olumpa where I... Uh, I um, am the innovation lead at Olumpa, and um, so I work on a lot of cool new products and features and um, do a lot of stuff with React and also uh, with microservices and Node and that sort of thing. I've written um, a, a book called the Sakadayo Cookbook, um, which you can buy online either on uh, Amazon or on the Pact website or even on uh, at Barnes & Noble. And um, I've in my free time, I work on apps and things for my son with autism who uh, who is a nonverbal so I've, I've made some things like uh, an app called voice choice where you can go in and uh, make choices and you know tap the choice and it'll say the word and so it gives him kind of the ability to speak for himself and, and uh, show what he wants um, in certain situations and then of course like I said before my website is TysonCadenhead.com um, and that's where you can find my blog and uh, and uh, my YouTube channel and things like that. So let's jump right in. First of all what is functional programming? It's been kind of a uh, thing that it took me a while to come to terms with because um, for a while there I was really happy doing uh, more classical uh, object-oriented kind of programming which is a fine approach also, but um, it's a completely different approach. And so wrapping your head around functional programming kind of takes in a lot of uh, different ideas. So the first thing I'm going to say before I even jump into this is I'm not going to get into a lot of the like more technical aspects of functional programming. I'm not going to be talking about monads or anything like that in this talk. Um, but what I want to talk about is kind of what the core of what makes functional programming functional programming. So the first thing, of course, is that there are pure functions. And by that I mean a function is just something that takes arguments and returns values um, without side effects. So um, a, an example of an impure function is if you uh, had a function inside of the function you were setting local storage or you were uh, adding something to uh, the context outside of the function like a window or um, th something like that that would be an impure function and um, those tend to be uh, less predictable than pure functions because they're causing side effects that um, you may not even be able to know what's going on outside of. So um, it's really important for uh, for functional programming that functions uh, for the most part remain pure so that um, things become more predictable. Um, another thing is immutable types. So in functional programming, you can you can only change a type or change a uh, a variable by um, by returning a new variable. So the idea is that you you aren't um, using like the let or the var; you're using const instead, and this allows you to um, this allows you to always know that the current version of the variable you're using is hasn't been mutated, um, which is very important. Um, because of uh, things like pure functions and immutability, you actually can do functional composition, which I'll go into in a little bit about like what it looks like to actually compose functions. But um, this is a really cool concept um, that you can take multiple functions and compose them and, um, and from one to the next, you you can uh, build up a, an entire new function based on uh, composing several functions together. Next, there's uh, currying. Um, currying is um, where you can take uh, multiple arguments for a function, but only execute uh, one or two at a time, and then um, and then you can go in and uh, execute the rest of your your uh, you can pass in the rest of your arguments 
and then the function will finally execute. And this is a, a concept that can be used a lot in a, especially in in a JavaScript, um, because you can you can start building up partially executed functions and then finish the execution as needed. Another thing is higher order functions. So this is when um, when you can pass a function into a function to uh, to uh, use it later on. So some good uh, examples of this are uh, the the array in JavaScript has some like map, filter, and reduce methods where you can pa pass in um, an argument that gets executed every time that uh, you map over your your uh, array, for example. And so every time it's going through the array, it fires the function again and again, and that function you pass in is um, technically it's a higher order function. So uh, why, why functional? What's the benefit of going functional with JavaScript? First of all, there's just fewer bugs. Um, the reason for that is because you're, uh, you don't have the side effects. You're not mutating state, and so um, bugs just tend not to occur quite as often because you have more reliability and you know what's actually going on. Um, the next benefit is testable code. Um, because most of, your, most of your app is going to just be functions that are pure, it's really easy to test a pure function because you know that if you pass in the same arguments, the same argument, the uh, same results are going to be uh, returned to you. So, um, in, in contrast to uh, object-oriented programming, where sometimes you have to set up um, the context for the class um, before you can even try the method and and uh, make sure that it's right. Um, with with functional programming, it's just as simple as as uh, calling a function and um, and then getting the value. Also, you have smaller units. Um, Whereas uh, in in a uh, object oriented programming, you might have a a big class that has a lot of different things on it, and this is kind of like this analogy of like if you if you are, want a banana, you you know you call for a banana. Whereas in object oriented programming, if you want a banana, you would get like the gorilla, and you would get the entire jungle too. So this this idea of like you only pull in what you need, and um, you only execute that. So all that being said, React is kind of functional in nature already. It's um, not a huge step to take it to to be a completely functional uh, kind of paradigm. And let me kind of look at what a few things that make it more functional. So first of all, the data flow in React is very functional. Um, React has what we call a unidirectional data flow. So everything starts at the top, and then it passes props down to the components underneath it which in turn pass props into the, to the components underneath them and it kind of just continues and continues. Um, this, um, this means that you can't actually change the props in a lower level component that's being rendered by a parent. Um, so um, this kind of enforces a more strict immutability in, on the data and the data flow. Next of all, um, React has functional components. This allows you to uh, just return JSX in a function as opposed to uh, traditionally um, b before they introduced the functional components you had to either set up a uh, a uh, object um, a react.create class or you um, would use an ES6 class with a render method um, so there's a, a lot less set up to just uh, have a functional component that's a function and it returns what you need to return um, another thing is the ecosystem in React. So in React, there's a lot of uh, kind of functional uh, things built around it. One of them, um, of course, is Redux, um, which is a completely kind of functional stateless uh, or a sta state state uh, wrapper that you can you can uh, set your your global state in. And so um, the basic idea there is that you you have a function that um, is calls your actions um, and that gets triggered passed into the redux uh, to the re reducers and the reducers are all looking for certain things on certain actions to be fired and when those are fired then it, the reducer just returns its new state so instead of like modifying its a uh, its state it's uh, just returning a new state and that new state is uh, th is then available in your store um, so other things like uh, a mutable js that's a, a very um, functional kind of paradigm that you're you're just using um, 
immutable data types to create um, things like uh, things like uh, arrays and objects um, and uh, you're not able to change those you're just able to um, create new versions of them um, and then uh, of course there's type systems like uh, flow and typescript that can kind of work into functional programming as well but the thing is we can do better it's not like a perfect system yet and um, and that's fine because um, because there are things that we can do to improve it. So first of all, there's uh, class mutations. So in React, like um, it, you you can you can use classes instead of uh, functions for your components. And um, the thing is, you can mutate those classes. So um, I could change uh, what what the, this dot state is. I can change um, what this dot props is inside of the the individual component. And so things like that. Um, can lead to side effects if you if you abuse them. Another thing is life cycle and animations. So you can actually um, only do animations, um, at least in React Native, when you use uh, classical components. So uh, there's um, there's some libraries right now that kind of work around that, but it's definitely a, a real uh, issue because. Um, that's one place where you really have to use use uh, and anim animation is really a place where you have to use uh, classical components. Also, in the life cycle hooks, um, there there are uh, ways around this which we'll be looking at. But um, out of the box, life life cycle hooks are are um, only available on the class. So you have to have a class to be able to call things like uh, component did mount and uh, and uh, component will update and things like that. Um, another thing is data transforms. So uh, you you can of course use a uh, array methods like map, filter, and reduce. But you could also just use um, a for loop or a while loop inside of your inside of your uh, render method. And uh, I've seen people do this, so I know I know it happens. And so that's something you you can be aware of and be working around if if you so choose. So um, we're going to be looking at some helpful libraries to kind of work um, using functional programming instead of uh, instead of a more traditional approach to using React. And these are some that I, I've found really helpful, and I think you will too. So first of all, there's a utility library called Ramda. Um, Ramda is like if you're used to using something like a low dash or underscore, this is kind of like that, but this is um, completely built um, functionally from the ground up. So uh, it has things like, uh, of course, every function is pure, um, so there's no side effects in any of them. Um, every function is curried automatically, so like uh, you can execute like part of the part of it and then execute the rest of it later, or you can um, execute it all at once. Things like that make it really helpful, and there's just a lot of really cool utilities in there. We'll be looking at some of them um, and how how they can work into our uh, React apps. Next of all, we have recompose. Uh, recompose is uh, specifically for React, but it gives you like a lot of higher order components, which will allow you to uh, wrap your uh, your functional components with um, things that you would traditionally need a class for. And then uh, last of all, React functional lifecycle. This is a library that I wrote myself, but it just allows you to type in to tap into the lifecycle methods like. Uh, like a uh, component did update, component did mount, um, component will update, those sorts of things, um, with with functions um, that you with higher order functions, I should say, that you wrap your uh, your functional components in. So all that being said, um, in the next video, we're going to actually go in and refactor some code, and um, we're going to take some code that was object oriented to begin with, um, and then we're going to turn it into functional code. So uh, look forward to joining you next time. This has been Tyson with JavaScript Vignettes.